I'm Jess with Drifter Journey, and here is our new van tour video. Come on in! Hi everybody, I'm Greg, the other half to Drifter Journey. I'm going to give you a quick little intro here about this van, and then Jess is going to take you through all the fine details. Uh, so we've been living full-time in a van for over three years now, and our previous van was a 2017 Ram Promaster that we had professionally built. Uh, this one here is a 2019 Ram Promaster that we built ourselves. So if you want to check out our old van tour, click on up over here. We'll send you through the video for that one. Uh, but we're going to go through this one. We're going to give you some discounts along the way for some of the products we use. And we will let you know what we changed between this model and the previous one to make this one the ultimate adventure rig. Up front here, we have a pretty standard Ram Pro Master cab. Keep in mind, we do live in this full time, so if you see any piles, that's why. <laughs> it's full of stuff, and we pack this van every nook and cranny full. So we put in an awesome swivel seat by Swivels R Us. It's really easy to use. We really like it. And underneath here, we have a powered 8-inch JL subwoofer. Um, that's not the only audio upgrade we did. We also took out the factory speakers in the front doors and replaced them with Polk Audio 6.5 inch rounds. And then in the back doors, we have 6x9 Polk Audio speakers as well. Those are weather resistant so that when we have the doors open and it happens to be raining, uh, we're not worried about them. I'm going to show you guys the kitchen area now. Uh, first thing you'll notice about our cabinets is that we actually have steel square tubing that's welded together for our cabinets. We decided to do this because our first van did have this uh, built this way and we really liked how durable and strong it was. Uh, we learned to weld for this project so that was really exciting. And um, we just like how lightweight and industrial it looks. We used uh, PVC plastic panels with vinyl coating for the, the panels themselves. So again, keeping it lightweight and durable. And this is our kitchen storage for cook pots, teapots, um, baggies, what have you. Up here we have our, it's kind of a bathroom cabinet. So hygiene things, uh, sewing kit, all kinds of other fun stuff, hair clippers for when we do haircuts on the road. And then we have our kitchenette here. So again, steel welded construction, we have a dual cooktop, dual burner cooktop sink combo. So we really like this style. It keeps it really compact and small so that when we're not using it, it can just tuck away and give us extra counter space. This is a less expensive version than the one we had in our first van. Uh, the first van had the Dometic cooktop that we really liked. Unfortunately, it was not available when we were building this van, so we weren't able to use the same one. We do like this one, but in the future, if I had the chance to go to Medic, I would every time. It's just a high quality product. So then we have our fridge, which is the Truck Fridge TF-130 model. And it is one size up from our last fridge. So that was one of the big things that we changed from our last fridge, which was the uh, smaller one. It was only about this tall. And we can fit a little over a week's worth of food in here, plus beverages, which was a big complaint about our last one is it only held about three to five days worth of fresh food and then we couldn't really get a ton of beverages in there as well. So then lastly over here we have our pantry cabinet which holds all kinds of dishes and spices and it's kind of a mess. I'm not the best cook so it suffices and then we have all of our pantry storage. So that is it for the kitchen area. Um, one fun thing that we really like about this area is that we added a little extra lighting here. These are just cool little magnetic lights that are LED and rechargeable. They also have a motion sensor on them so we can turn them on at night and then they turn on when we come out of bed. And they just stick to the steel cabinet like that. Um, because we noticed in our first van that it didn't really have adequate lighting in the first place. So that's one of the major things that we changed as we added much more lighting. But when you're standing here cooking, you actually end up shading the cooktop with your body. So we added these little magnetic lights uh, to make up for that.
All right, you guys get me again. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about ventilation and how we did it in here. Um, so we have two CR Lawrence uh, windows, one on the driver's side, one on the passenger side. The driver's side has two windows that go out, I think they call them awning or dorm style. Uh, and then the slider door has one that goes out that's operable. So those will allow a lot of airflow through. And then we put in two Max Air fans. These are the Max Air Deluxes. Uh, I believe they're the 7500 series. Um, we have two of those so they can go either in or out. And we usually have the front one running out so it can pull a draft through the windows up and out. And if we're cooking, it drafts out whatever smoke as she says she burns things. So smoke goes out. Um, and then usually we have the rear one coming in. Uh, they do have a remote on this model and it'll work on either of them. Uh, the reason we wanted so much ventilation is obviously it can get hot in vans uh, even if you have a lot of insulation. So we didn't want to run an uh, air conditioner because we didn't want to put massive amount of batteries in. So we want dual fans, dual windows that open and then the second uh, benefit to the windows is it uh, prevents you from having really big blind spots. So. We really like to be able to see out when we're driving to make sure that we're not gonna run into things. So these are fantastic. And here is our dining room slash mobile office. So we have our dining room table on a lagoon swivel here and it swivels over here, I can be working, or this is where Greg would sit to eat, and I usually sit on that side. Um, it stows away really nicely when we're driving, so we can just tighten this lever here and it's there. Otherwise, it can swivel all the way around outside of the van door as well. If people are standing outside, we can kind of set snacks up on it and everybody can stand around and hang out. So in addition to our dining room area, this is also a ton of storage for us. In this cubby, we have all kinds of jackets and backpacks and hiking gear which is really critical for us to have room for storage with two people full time in this van and then on this side we have a false bottom it's kind of our everything drawer as well as our electrical components so you can see under here we've got two 200 amp hour agm batteries we've got an isolator our fuse box and then a bunch of circuit breakers so we wanted to keep that easy access and a little organized in there. People ask, how do you stay warm in a van? We have a heater. <laughs> so we have the Propex HS2000 heater in this little step here. We did not have a step here in our first van. We had a S-bar gas heater that was under the passenger seat where the subwoofer is that I showed you earlier. So the S-bar heater is plumbed directly into the gas line and we just found it to be a bit unreliable, which is why we switched to the Propex propane heater in this van. What that requires for the install is an undermount propane tank. So it's mounted under the van, right about here in the kitchen area. And that also means that we have to have a remote fuel fill kit. So it's a Westphalia propane tank. It's kind of long and narrow, fits right up under the van behind the muffler. And then you have a remote fill kit that gets uh, plumbed in to right about when you open the door so that we can just pull up to your propane fill and fill up real quick. It holds about 3.3 gallons of propane and so far it's lasted us a decent amount of time. We're happy with the propane heater. It's been very reliable so far. So we also have a thermostat over here from the Propex uh, brand and it tells us what temperature it is in here. In the van currently it's 74. And then if we wanted to turn on the heat, we could just change that. It's currently set to turn on at 48, which we obviously don't need. Um, and then that's how we control the heat in the van. We do get asked about the efficiency of gas versus propane. And we know that propane is a little bit more expensive, but because we typically chase 
warm weather and don't spend a ton of time in the cold weather, we're okay with that, especially because it ends up being a little bit more reliable for us in the end. Here is our bedroom slash family room. So we have all of our clothes storage right up here. Greg gets the first one and a half cabinets to here, and then I get the back one and a half cabinets for all of my clothes. You can see it's pretty packed full. Like I mentioned, we live in here full time, so got all our stuff. And when we want to watch a movie or TV, this is our setup. So we've got a little speaker here, and we set the tablet up like this, and we put our pillows on this side and watch TV because we normally actually sleep this way. Greg is 6'2", and people who are over six feet tall typically can't sleep this way in a ProMaster because it's almost exactly six feet too wide. So we do sleep long ways, and you may have noticed these 80-20 rails on our bed, and that is for our motorized bed lift system, which Greg will show you when he tours the garage for you. Okay, I'm going to tell you a little bit about uh, our electrical system before we go around to the garage. Um, as she mentioned, we have a bed lift. We will get to that in just a second. Uh, so up in the kitchen, that area, we have a little switch here. And we got a 12 volt outlet. So that's running our WeBoost uh, cell phone booster. And then two quick charge USBs here. And then this guy down here is for our SureFlow water pump. We have a water pump with our 10 gallon water jug and uh, accumulator in the rear. Over here, we have a built-in carbon monoxide detector uh, to keep us safe, obviously. And then on this side, we have our Renogy MPPT. Uh, it's the Rover 40 charge controller. And with that, we are running 400 watts of solar on the roof and two 200 amp hour AGM batteries from Renogy in here. Uh, that's another change we made from the previous van. Uh, we had 300 watts in that one with 200 amp hours of battery. So we added an extra 100 watts of solar on the roof and doubled our battery bank. Uh, we have a 700 watt Go Power inverter uh, right behind the cubby with the batteries in it. In our previous van, we didn't have an inverter for the first two years. We added it after the fact. Um, it, we really liked the product and we threw it in this one also. They're fairly inexpensive for the 700 watt. We don't run anything crazy in here, so we are using it to charge laptops, uh, run our hair clippers, our immersion blender, because we got bougie this year, and one other thing that I can't think of, uh, drone batteries. But prior to having an inverter, because everybody thought we were crazy, we would use our Jackery. So we had two of these guys, we gave one to a friend. Um, but this guy here is basically a mini inverter. So it has a 200 watt in this size uh, inverter and USB charger. And you can charge this while you're driving or you can hook into a solar panel with it. So for us now, this is a great backup or if we need ba uh, power outside of the van, great for us to have around camp. Uh, and then their larger models do have larger inverters in them to run bigger products. Uh, the last thing, we have two little mini USB fans in the rear with reading lights next to them. And then there is an additional USB charger back there. So from that, we will uh, pop the bed up and go around to the garage and show you all the stuff we got in this thing. Now the good stuff. And the mess. All right, so we'll give you the rundown of everything we got back here, but there is quite a bit. And this is the main thing we built the van based off of was we wanted to bring our gear with us and be able to live in it full time. We have a well used change room, which also serves as it's basically a little shower tent and or poop tent if you need to poop outside. 
We have 500 pound drawer slides. They come out, they lock, and I'm just gonna kinda show you a little bit here of what it can hold. So this is a bunch of fly fishing gear. In here we have the camp shower by Mr. Buddy, the same company. So the Mr. Buddy heaters does a camp shower. And then we have one 10 gallon onboard water tank. Um, it fits in front of the wheel well. And then we bring in additional jerry cans. So these are seven gallons each. We have three of them in here right now. Uh, one we do for shower, and then we have two that are our potable drinking water. So those, we have 25 gallons of drinking water and then seven gallons of shower at a time. Uh, in there, people ask, where do you poop? It's a, uh, that's your let's do this bucket. So, uh, just a Home Depot bucket with a, um, it's the toilet porter, or the whatever, potty top that you can get from Amazon. Uh, we don't use it all that often. As you can see, it's strapped down and hidden back here. Uh, but when we are on a beach in Baja or uh, we had up here in Alaska where we are now, a campsite that was right on a river and there was nowhere to go away from the river in the woods, we'll take that out. You just bag it and it can go quite a while. We know some people that use them for an extended period before they have to dump it, but we usually do it for two, three days max and then we'll change out the bag in it. We have a dual stage water filter that we use from the RV water filter store to hook up to basically, you know, most, uh, we hook that up to most any spigot that's outside of a building uh, or wherever we find them randomly. As long as we think the water is going to be fairly good, we'll run it through that and drink it. And then we have these Remington storage bins. So we really like these because they are stackable. We've had these since the beginning. Uh, they've held up quite well. And so we just marked them with some green tape and wrote what was in each one. So we have backpacking stuff, climbing gear, uh, mountain biking gear. I don't even know what's in this one because it's not labeled right now. Um, our tool bin and uh, fishing and pack rafts. So tons of sports, tons of space to, to basically have all the fun stuff with us. And then on the opposite side, we have another slide out with our mountain bikes. So we knew we wanted two mountain bikes with us, one for each of us. We wanted to make sure that they would go inside. This is where the bed lift came in handy. Uh, yeah, so we had to do the bed lift to be able to fit the mountain bikes because the seats and handlebars sit pretty high. So we lifted the bed up to get it in. When we put these in and lock it, we will drop it back down to seat height. It's actually handlebar because we've got a safe under there that knocks into it. Um, and then we have some recovery boards from TreadPro back here to get unstuck if you get stuck somewhere. We got them mounted up here. We try not to take them out very often but we have had to take them out a few times for other people. Uh, yeah, so when the bikes aren't in, we can drop the bed down all the way to this level, and then I can actually sit up in bed. It's, it's great. Uh, half the year I work, and we actually have the bikes in a friend's garage so that we get the bed set low for that half of the year. It's kind of like home base time and makes it really comfortable. Uh, other than that, over the wheel wells, we have all kinds of storage here. So on this side, you won't be able to see it. The 10 gallon water tank is up front. We got a hose that we just used to fill with a ball valve on it. It has an overflow that goes out the bottom. We have camp chairs, a uh, camp table, a, a bug easy up kind of thing. And then a collapsible bucket and just some random stuff on this side. And then on the other side, we got two ukuleles, uh, a wetsuit, some surf fins, and our 
tarps and some climbing holds because we can do pull-ups inside the door uh, for working out. All right, so the first thing outside that we changed on this one uh, versus the old model is the awning. So on our previous van, we had a very expensive electric awning up here that was permanently mounted to the exterior. It was on a switch. We had nothing but troubles with it, so we chose not to do it on this one. Uh, save ourselves well over $1,000. Uh, so for this one, we use a camp tarp and it's just onto some eye bolts on the top. So I might throw it up here at the end for you guys if you guys want to stick around and see how that works. Um, and then we will work our way around to the back. So on the way to the back, we have Wild Peak AT3W. Uh, these are all-terrain tires. They are LT245 7516, so this is one size up from stock. Uh, we did have to trim out the wheel well a little bit, the front and the rear, just to make sure there was clearance. Um, front and the rear back here, the fronts didn't need to be trimmed. Uh, so yeah, as we swing around the back, you will see that we carry a motorcycle with us. Um, and that brings us to the best and first discount for you guys here, uh, is this motor tote carrier. So we've had this thing on here for over three years. We actually had it on our vehicle prior to that. Uh, it has LED light system that you can buy with it. And this thing's solid. Another product we use is the Rack Attach by 1UP. Uh, this is a swing out carrier for the hitch, which allows us to get the motorcycle out of the way. Um, if you are gonna get one, check the specs, make sure you can hold the weight that you're gonna have on there. We don't make any guarantees of what it can hold. We've seen 250 to 300 pounds, and our TW200 comes in about 280. I think it's gonna be the weakest when it's open. We've had it on, we haven't had issues, but do your own research on that one. Okay, one item that we added on this van that we didn't have on the previous van is this awesome ladder slash surf rack. Um, I picked up surfing in the last couple years on the road, and as you can see, we just have the wave storm with us, but surfboards are big and get in the way, especially if you're newer, you need bigger boards. So, Jess didn't like when the boards were inside all the time, so we knew we needed a solution. So we did the ladder rack uh, because then we have access to the roof to get to the solar panels and clean them. That was a kind of a difficulty on the previous model. You didn't have a way to get up there. Uh, and then we just have this extra bar on the front that allows for the surfboard to mount to. It's got some of these little rings to tie it into so we can mount two boards on the outside here and access the roof. Okay, folks, that pretty much wraps it up for the tour today. We hope you appreciated it. And hopefully we didn't miss anything. Um, I'm Greg and this is Jess from Drifter Journey. Thank you for watching. Uh, as for the discounts, we had the motorcycle rack discount on the back there if you're still with us. Uh, we'll have links for our discount codes below. Uh, CBD, you can do Chill Wellness. We have a link for that. Uh, we have... Luna sandals. Luna sandals. Awesome sandals. They're kind of the, I call it the barefoot feeling. I love them, wear them all the time. Jess has a pair that's nice and pretty in leather. They're pretty sweet. Uh, and then what's the last one we got for them? Harvest Host. Harvest Host. Uh, if you don't know what Harvest Host is, that is a membership that's an annual membership and then you can basically stay on private properties. They have an app and then you would click where you're at and it says, oh, are there wineries or breweries or this and that around? You can go and stay there. Uh, you're kind of expected to purchase something from them. So we've stayed on uh, like a, a, I'll call it a goat farm. It was a pepper farm, but goat farm, mm -hmm. um, wineries in Mexico, awesome places. So if you're looking for places to camp that are unique, Harvest Hosts, you'll get a discount with our code below. And if you have any questions on the build, uh, let us know in the comments. We are releasing a video, a couple videos a week right now, but we'll guarantee a video a week. And we do 
you know, a, a travel vlog of where we're at and what we've been doing. And we're also trying to trickle in uh, basically van life tips for you guys or boondocking tips or alternative living tips. So if there's anything you want to know, let us know. And then for products that we used in this build particularly, um, we have an Amazon link down below. She can talk about it. She's better at this part. We have a Drifter Journey Amazon storefront where we've created some idea lists for you guys where you can shop our van build, you can shop best van life accessories, all kinds of fun stuff. So we'll link that for you below. We get a small kickback from every Amazon purchase that you make and it costs you nothing extra. So we appreciate you shopping through our links. Yeah, buy whatever you want. It doesn't matter. It still <laughs> gives us a kickback. So use the link, enjoy it. Um, Please do let us know if you have any questions. We really do want to be helpful. And uh, thanks again for watching.